Morning. Well, um, this is my 850 that wasn't chosen in the last giveaway. And um, I went through the documents the other day and I found that the, the original registration certificate from Volvo, the first owner had quite an interesting name and it gave me an idea. So this car is going away for a little while and then it will be coming back. And when it comes back, you'll be able to grab it for 10 quid. But um, that will probably be in February. So uh, it's off for... <laughs> I'm all right. I don't know if this is a good idea, but um, I think it's funny uh, and I like the idea and it's something I've wanted to do. So, um, right, I'm going to drive this away and I'm going to come back in the V70 two and a half litre non-turbo 20 valve, which I bought the other night. Uh, so you'll see that car later today, but um, this is the last you're going to see of this 850 for a little while. <laughs> I think I'm going to regret this, but it's nothing that can't be undone. So, um, right, park that with me for a little while and we'll see what happens. It's quite a late car, this one. It wasn't actually registered until 1997, which I'm pretty sure is the very end of 850 production before it was replaced by the V70. So we've got quite a bit of lack of peel going on on the bonnet. Um, but generally, it's in pretty good condition. The wheels could do with a refurb and it needs some center caps. And it does look to me like the driver's door is perhaps a different shade of silver to the rest of it. But generally, that's a pretty straight and tidy car. I'm gonna take it for a little drive now. I'm in fact gonna drive the rest of my journey and uh, do a little review on the car. And then what we'll do is we'll do the same thing with the V70 20 valve on the way back. And for the first time ever, I'm leaving this parking space without the use of somebody else's van and someone else's jump leads. So um, there we go. I am not sad to be shot of that Daimler. People like a Volvo 850. When you see a Volvo 850 out and about, people do give you a good old grin. And I'm not going to apologise for the lighting in this video, because if you live in Britain, then you'll know that we've just had pretty much the worst December ever. It's rained basically every day. So I'm not going to apologise for the fact that sun is streaming through the windows, but I am going to turn my, uh, turn my phone off, open my sunroof, and then I take my hat off and try and get some beautiful sunshine onto my bald head. I tell you what, a Volvo 850 is a comfortable thing as well. These seats, I mean, I talked about putting Saab seats in my 850, but the more I've used it, the more I'm thinking I'll just leave them as they are. I love my GLT diesel, I really do. We've done now 600 miles in it, sort of shaking it down and, and just ironing out all the little things. Um, today, Lyndon is, is refitting the rear bumper, correcting the C brackets. So some photos of that here. Uh, I asked him to put a photo of the new C bracket next to the old C bracket but he said that the old C bracket doesn't actually make a C anymore because it's that rusty and the top half has gone missing. Uh, so there we go. But uh, I say this car doesn't have that problem. Right, here we go then, back up to Ant, Sign and Print, who did my Volvo 850 touring car to drop off the 850 and collect the V70. So let's go and have a little look at the V70 and I can show you some of the differences between these two cars. The so basic body style is the same. Um, you've got the same spoiler, everything is pretty much the same. This one's got some funky exhaust pipe on it. So it's got a twin exit on it. And as I said, it's a 20 valve. The 10 valve engine just has the DOHC on the top of the engine block. Um, pretty dirty in here to be honest but this was the London car that's been used and abused for all its life and then over here on the V70 you've got the 20 valve on the top of the rocker cover there um, so big old air filter that James has done so it's gonna be interesting to see how this goes um, when compared to that one obviously I'm doing the exact same journey home so it's going to be really interesting to see how this one drives. I'm quite excited. But now I'm going to go talk to um, talk to Matt about the plan for this car because it is getting a uh, a mild makeover. Just a little sneak peek of something that we're definitely not working on. Definitely not going to do it this way. So there we have the uh, graphic, and Matt is now making it go on the dudes because that he is effectively wearing a helmet, isn't he? So yes. I don't know whether it needs to come down a bit. Go forward a bit then. Yeah, that's going to be it. Because you've got that bit there, which should yeah. be over his eye. I mean, you could put a pair of eyes on him if you want. Um, it might be funny to do that. Right then. Now I'm in a V70. So, first impressions. I was expecting it to feel quicker off the mark. It's definitely not, oh, it is quicker. 
It's definitely noisier, but that'll be the exhaust, but it, it is a quicker car, it feels more lively. Um, it feels a bit more awake than the other one. But um, I gotta admit, I prefer the 850. But then again, I knew that. With 269,216 miles on the clock. Um, it's a little bit worse than it looked in the pictures, but <laughs> that's a Jeff car for you, isn't it? Right, you ready? Listen to this. noise okay I'll be honest it does feel quicker it feels like it's got a bit more poke than the 10 valve but not as much as I was expecting but also I think there is a slight element of the fact that I think this is a high mileage and slightly tired V70 whereas the one that I drove up there was a better example of the 850 if that makes sense I think James might be watching this video, who I bought the car from, and thinking, no, he's wrong, that might be a high mileage car, but it's amazing, and I've looked after it, and I've done this, that, and the other. Um, that's just the way it feels. It just feels like a high mileage car. But, you wish a Thornburg eat your heart out, 269,000 miles, and going strong, and about to go on, you know, to another new and loving owner. So, um, you can't really sniff at that, in terms of saving the planet. You should just keep old cars going forever. Stop making new cars. It's as simple as that. I'm driving along on my way back home, uh, listening to Joe Rogan's superb podcast, uh, talking about doing fair tests and how um, certain things that are going on at the moment haven't been tested fairly and the evidence hasn't been given to the public in, um, in a fair way in terms of a trial. But my Volvo test has been absolutely fair because I've driven the exact same journey. Now, funnily enough, I reckon both Volvos had the same amount of fuel in when I started. I put, um, I think I, I put 20 quid in the 850 and um, the fuel light was on when I got to Nottingham. So 20 pound in my 850 got me to Nottingham with the fuel light on when I got there. My V70, I've had to break up my journey to go and get more fuel. I put 20 pound in in Nottingham and now the fuel light's on. Uh, so I'm gonna put some more fuel in just in case because I just don't want to run out of fuel But the dial is right at the bottom of the red so It was there when I started and I put 20 quid in and I've done 63 miles Which means <laughs> I'll work out the math on what that means. I don't know what's left in the tank Because the onboard computer doesn't seem to be working on this car but I'm pretty confident that the High mileage 20 valve Volvo is using all the petrol. Yeah, great. I mean, I bet this whole car was cheaper than one payment on that Mercedes Benz EQC 400 Q4 Matic. Um, and also, it's paid its due diligence to the um, it's paid its due diligence to the environment by the fact that it hasn't been scrapped and it's still in use. Whereas the car that I'm driving next to now. It's got what, three years and however many thousand miles before it's paid its dues to the environment, by which point the person driving it will be uh, leasing a new one. So what makes more sense? Keeping these old Volvos on the road? I mean, look, there's a little, there's a little light there on his mirror, which says that there's a camera monitoring what's going on behind the car. I don't have one of them. Do you know why? I don't need one. He's also probably got an electronic tailgate. I don't have one of them either. Do you know why? Because I don't need one. He's probably got multiple electronic sensors for electronic things that are inside the car, none of which you need. And this is why I'm stuck in this paradox of buying cars from the late 90s to early 2000s. Because I don't need any of the crap that they pile onto modern cars. I've got a decent stereo, I've got heated seats, and I've got an air conditioning system that works. There we go, that is the conclusion of my Jeff video. Uh, thanks very much for watching um, what was actually quite a long adventure today, back and forth. And um, I look forward to revealing the full extent of what I've done to the 850 in due course. Hopefully I haven't ruined it, but we'll find out. Now, I'm gonna enjoy a sunset.
YouTube's most boring car channel.